Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, something has been showing up on a lot of exams. So I'll put this little uh, ditty in both the uh, SIE playlist, the six playlist, the seven playlist, the 65 playlist. I'll even put it in 66. A lot of times I not I don't put things that are testable on 66 in the 66 playlist because uh, the assumption is you had a seven. So and hopefully some of that stuff is fresh. But in this case, I'll go ahead and put it in there as well because it's showing up on all the exams. It took me a while to figure this one out, what people were seeing, because they kept you know, saying, what is this thing? So a DRIP, that stands for a Dividend Reinvestment Program. And so we have Dividend Reinvestment Programs, hence the term DRIPs. Now, I'm dating myself, but as an old dude back in the day, before there were commission-free trading and stuff, one thing you could do and I did this to get my round lots when I was much younger and didn't have any resources. I would enroll in the dividend reinvestment program at ExxonMobil, for example. ExxonMobil has a dividend reinvestment program. And I said, well, listen to ExxonMobil. I don't need those dividends. So whatever you were going to go ahead and send me in dividends, just go ahead and buy me additional ExxonMobil shares. Kind of a nifty way. Sometimes they even have would have a discount on that. They sometimes have optional cash payments. And then what I would do is when I accumulated a round lot, 100 shares, I would tell the uh, administrator of the DRIP program at ExxonMobil to send me the uh, 100 shares. And yes, certificates are real. And these days, there were real physical certificates. And I would take it to the uh, cashiering uh, department, the cashier at my broker dealer, and they would put it in my brokerage account. So I accumulated many uh, round lots that way. Those days, there wasn't you know Robinhood or E-Trade or anything like that. Uh, the IRS says in that situation, Dean, uh, you could have got those dividends from, from the issuer, Exxon. And even though you chose not to, you still have constructive receipt. And so what that means is if you have a choice between getting the money and not, and you choose not, like in this case, that's called constructive receipt. Now, let me get my annotation tool here. And the IRS says that's the same as getting it. And so I'm going to owe taxes on whatever those dividends were. So those dividends are taxable. Constructive receipt is the test term for that. Yeah, by the way, that's you're not a term you're going to see on the test. Uh, what has been showing up is the term DRIP, Dividend Reinvestment Program. And it's usually showing up where the issuer is an open-end fund. So I have some uh, questions here uh, that I think are pretty close or similar to what you are people are encountering on their exam. I have three of them. And usually in this dividend reinvestment program, it's from a mutual fund. The issuer is an open-end mutual fund. And I tell the open-end mutual fund, I don't need any dividends. So just go ahead and take whatever dividends and adding another twist to it, capital gains distributions and reinvest those in the fund. So I've got three different versions here we can expect. This is the one that people on debrief are telling me they encounter most often is something like this. So whoop, let me clean up my screen here. A customer owns a municipal bond fund. Now, they might be as kind as to tell you it's a tax-free fund. I wouldn't count on their kindness here. You should know that a municipal bond pays tax-free interest, and therefore, the muni bond fund is a tax-free fund. The customer tells the muni bond fund, you know, for example, when I was a baby broker decades ago, I sold a lot of the Franklin tax-free funds. That was one of my go-to moves. And, you know, uh, very rarely would, uh, at the time, the guy whose name was Raphael Constance, uh, with the portfolio manager selling bonds because he's trying to minimize capital gains distributions. But there are, you know, uh, tax-free bond fund managers who so say, if interest rates go down and the bonds go up, maybe I'll get some capital gains as well and sell the bonds. You know, that's one of the disadvantages of, uh, you know, having a mutual fund. The fund manager decides when it's time to realize the tax consequences. So here, the uh, customer reinvests the capital gains distribution and the dividends. So I'm telling the tax-free municipal bond fund, whatever you're going to send me, just uh, reinvest it in the fund. Now, what best describes the tax consequences? The dividends and capital gains distributions are not taxed. No, I mean, don't, you know, the only component of a muni bond that is tax-free is the interest payments. Now, remember, under DAI 90, the interest payments on the bonds are flowing through to the tax-free bond fund uh, shareholder as a dividend. So let's look at B. Dividends are not taxed. That's true. 
and capital gains distributions are taxed indeed, right? If the tax-free fund manager has a capital gain distribution to the shareholders, that you are going to owe taxes on. Now, as I told you in the Franklin, I'm not sure if they still follow, you know, what uh, Dave Dewerson, who was before Raphael and Raphael, I don't that's still their mindset and the tax-free funds at Franklin to try and minimize those capital gains distributions to the shareholders, but, you know, uh, B is true. So in this situation, we are going to answer B. Again, this is a very high probability that you're going to see a question like this on your exam. Uh, neither is taxed. No, both are taxed. No. Okay, now let's uh, look at a question that looks pretty similar in terms of a drip a dividend reinvestment program where I'm reinvesting dividends and I'm uh, making a little uh, adding to the mix here. I'm going to reinvest capital gains distributions. Now, remember, the IRS says, Dean, you could have got those capital gains distributions. You chose not to, but that's constructive or CEO taxes. So the answer there was B. Now, let's look, just change one thing. Please note, the only thing that we changed is it was previously a municipal bond fund, and now it is a corporate bond fund. And again, that stresses our thing about RTFQ. Make sure you're reading the full question, right? So now they might be kind enough to say to you that this is a taxable bond fund. You know, I wouldn't count on it, but you should know the corporate bonds, the interest you receive is taxable. So now the question reads exactly the same, but the answer is going to be different. The customer reinvests the capital gains distributions and the dividends. So remember, the dividends are the flow through of the interest from the corporate bonds, and that interest is taxable. So now the answer is going to be A, both the dividends, which represents the interest being passed through from the bonds, and the capital gains distributions are taxed. Right, So dividends and capital gains distributions are not taxed. Eh. Dividends not taxed and capital gains are taxed. Eh. Both are taxed. Right, So now our answer is D. So uh, be careful on these questions. One more version of this. One more version of this. Let me clean up my slide. Okay, come on. Let me do that. Okay, there we go. Whoop. A common stock mutual fund. So now here we are. It's not a bond fund. It's a common stock fund. The customer reinvests the capital gains and distributions uh, and dividends. So now these are dividends. They're coming from the stocks in the portfolio and capital gains distributions. So here, what best describes it again, both will be taxed. Now, as I mentioned, the one that shows up most often is this uh, Muni Bond one. So I'm hoping that this little uh, uh, video can find you a couple points. I think there's definitely a point to be had in this uh, mutual uh, municipal bond tax-free uh, bond fund question for you. Uh, remember, uh, inch by inch, your exam is a cinch. Yard by yard, your exam is hard. And I'll see you for the next installment, uh, whatever that may happen to be. Bye-bye.